Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, so these male uh, Insularis born in January of 2017 uh, have outgrown their enclosures and I've made space for them in these larger enclosures. They ate last week, which Getting males to eat on a regular basis is a very tough task. Um, so I figured they got a meal in them so I can cause some major butt hurt so they won't feed for a while <laughs> when I move them to their new enclosures. Uh, um, they're quite beautiful, they're the blue variety. Um, uh, and they're quite foul. These males will have a, have a go at me uh, when I piss them off. So, they're quite lanky, uh, he's, well, you know, he's a little thin, but uh, uh, this is the life of the male Insularis, and he doesn't like Mr. Camera, does he? <laughs> so, uh, these will, uh, will put, uh, put you in the hurt locker, so to speak. Uh, they probably won't kill you, but it'll be a very unpleasant week or so. Um, unfortunately, uh, my next shipment of antivenin for these guys won't happen until probably the beginning of next year because uh, the Thai Red Cross is out of serum right now and uh, uh, they're making more and it takes time to process it and such. Uh, so we're going to work really hard at not taking a bite from anything in the collection. Um, if, if I had a choice, it would be one of the, the Spitalaps uh, Lubricus, the Coral Culbras. Uh, um, actually, it would be our little normal corn snake that nobody wanted uh, was probably going to feed to some, some other snake eater. Uh, that's the one that we would want to take a bite from here at the lair. So um, this guy is going to uh, uh, get his new uh, headquarters here with, with a nice light. Come on, go up the tree. There you go. Um, he's got a hide spot. He's got a tree. He's got a basking zone. Uh, maybe he'll like this a lot better than uh, uh, before. Oh, we're getting a little tail... Uh, uh, slapping there, huh? He will come at you, so just be, be aware that uh, uh, when I've been tease feeding him, he's actually come at me. Uh, oh my! Yes, he's <laughs> <laughs> he's a cranky dude. So yeah, uh, he will bite you. <laughs> There's no question about it. <laughs> so I mean, the rock green rocket. Uh, over here will bite you, but only mostly because you think uh, you've got food. Uh, but she will also bite you. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, maybe next year I will pair some of these up and, uh, and make some more Insularis babies. Once I get the 13 that the, the blue girl down in the bottom there uh, uh, popped out, uh, once I get them all feeding and find homes for them, I'll produce try to produce some more maybe next year. We'll see. Uh, it all depends on how the pandemic goes because we're really only handling animals when absolutely necessary. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, they, they stay in their enclosures if they have stuck eye caps, stuck sheds. Um, sadly, I just uh, have to let them uh, deal with it on their own like they would in the wild. So, all right, well, let's move the second one. And then I'll clean these cages up and uh, uh, we will uh, uh, recycle them for some other snakes. Thank you. So we got this guy. Hello, nice to see you too. 
Come on. Oh, we're going to take a swing, huh? Uh-oh. Well, e even for tree snakes, uh, they can be uh, quite difficult. Uh, they don't necessarily hook very well. They will take the hook from you and run right up to your hand and you have to drop the hook. Um, but uh, the, the, the male, I mean, I don't normally call snakes aggressive, but the males are a bit aggressive. They're, or highly defensive, I think, is the proper term. Hi there. Yes, I know you want to bite me on my nose. I'm not going to let you. <laughs> I know I see you. Uh, so, you know, we pay them the respect they they really deserve. Uh, you know, right now we've got 13 babies over there in the bin that, you know, Lori and I are cannula feeding once a week, uh, which means that we have to restrain them. I have to grab them by their pointy little head and uh, stuff a tube down their throat, give them some sustenance, and then uh, uh, once that's done, uh, I will... Uh, uh, I throw them back in their bin. So he's exploring his uh, his new enclosure. So we're going to shut this and let him settle in. And we'll go about our uh, normal business here at the lair. Oh, isn't that nice? He's got a nice uh, place to hold on to and take a nice long strike at me. <laughs> Oh, and the guy above him is in, still in strike position. He's not tail rattling now because the threat is not imminent. Uh, not that I'm really a threatening sort of person. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, these are cool snakes. and They're certainly very pretty. Yes, and I think, you know, I was expecting the female down there to produce a mix of colors, but she produced all uh, turquoise or sea green ones, not, not blue, not yellow green like the rocket, uh, but all turquoise. I was, I was happy that she finally produced babies. I thought she was going to explode by, uh, by August. Uh, I was really worried about her. Um, but I was expecting a mix of colors, so uh, I'm not sure what it takes uh, uh, to get uh, a mix of colors. Uh, but I'm just happy that I got some, some nice little babies, including some that have sort of a tiger pattern uh, that you might have seen in one of the videos. Uh, it's all uh, pretty cool. Hi there, bud. Would you like this treat? Huh? No, no, no. It's it's not dangerous. I promise. You, ringed water culvers are very, very shy creatures. Um, uh, Lori will will attest to that. Uh, it takes them a long time to be uh, what I consider to be uh, uh, ready feeders that are not easily offended. Uh, you know, thud over the heron on the other side of the room. I've had him for a very long time. I'd have to look up the date when I got him, but um, probably in the mid to late uh, 2000s. Uh, um, but water culbras are, uh, are a species that I'm really trying to feed, uh, feed, breed. Uh, I'll get it straight eventually. Um, and these guys are coming up on uh, breeding age. I've got, uh, I think, two males and four females uh, spread about the lair. Uh, there's four water culvers right here. There's two babies uh, in the other room. There's thud across the way. Um, so uh, these are amongst my favorites. Uh, there's another one down here. We'll see if it will eat uh, its second one. Hello. You really need your cage cleaned. I clean the other one. I see movement under there. Uh, 
not sure where the opening is. They, they really don't like to be visited, uh, so I'm somewhat hesitant in lifting the lid here because, like I said, it takes a while before they get to the point where they're not offended by being uh, bothered. But I'm not going to stand here forever. Hello. Would you like that? There you go. All right, we'll just uh, lower your lid again and uh, <laughs> let you go about your business. There you go. You got your little nose there uh, and your mouse you're dragging it under there. Um, water culprits are very interesting. They're highly neurotoxic, but in a very nice uh, paper done by Brian Fry's group, uh, water culbras, ringed water culbras in particular, like these. Um, they have highly neurotoxic venom. They're not, uh, uh, they're, their venom isn't like other species of culbra where uh, the defensive culbras like the Indian culbra, Naya Naya, uh, Naya Cayuthia in particular, they have components in their venom that are cytotoxic cause pain and tissue destruction um, and it seems to correlate according to Dr. Fry's paper um, uh, the flashier the snake uh, the more uh, of an aggressive uh, defense they put up uh, the more cytotoxic the venom is basically his his premise and uh, he demonstrates that quite nicely in his paper uh, the less flashy the snake, the more reclusive and retiring uh, seems to correlate with having less uh, cytotoxins in, in their venom uh, because they're less defensive. Uh, everybody knows and likes to keep Cayuthia because they put on that fantastic uh, display. However, if you get bit by them, you're not only going to experience a very neurotoxic bite, but you may lose some of your flesh uh, in the process because of the cytotoxins that are uh, prevalent in the venom.